Alimentation Couchetard looking across the Atlantic at French grocer Carrefour and a deal, exploratory talks, but a deal that could be worth north of $20 billion. Alimentation Couchetard shares are down more than 10% right now. I understand the, ban the bonds are not reacting favorably, and the French finance minister doesn't like the deal either. So what's going on? What's the thinking behind this potential transaction? Let's bring in Aaron Sundarum. He's an equity analyst at CFRA Research. And Aaron, I want to start there with you because it doesn't seem like anyone is particularly hot for this idea. How do you, how do you think it stacks up? Hey, yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so the shares are down roughly 10%. I think investors are struggling to see the benefits of this uh, strategic combination. And they're probably wondering why Kustard would want to enter the highly competitive and evolving you know, food retail industry. Uh, Carrefour has more convenience stores than grocery stores, but you know, Kustard, like you know, is, you know uh, they specialize in the, in the convenience store industry, and they'll obviously be inheriting thousands of uh, grocery stores if this, if this deal goes through. Um, and, and food retail is not their expertise. But you know, keep in mind that Carrefour is undergoing a large transformation here within its food retail business. Um, as consumer ha habits change and you know online grocery shopping becomes a bigger bigger deal, so um, there there could be some um, tremendous value uh, to be unlocked here if if this transformation goes successfully. Yeah, I mean, we do know Kushtar, of course, is a convenience store operator, the gas stations that are attached to them, Statoil, that purchase years ago. It all made sense to everyone. As you said, people are struggling a little bit to say, hmm, how does this work together? But they do have a track record here. So, so what do you think about the fact that management has executed, you know, well in the past on, on very big transactions and that they would have some sort of faith here that it could work? Yeah, so that's that's one thing. That's a chatter I've been hearing all day today. You know, uh, Kush Tar, man, the management team, I think, is very strong. They have a proven track record of successful acquisitions. You know, acquisitions are part, are part of their DNA. They typically have three to four acquisitions per year. But over the past few years, things have been very slow because of, um, one, because of the pandemic. So you can see right now that, you know, they have a large risk appetite. It's the big, I think the bigger question is, you know, do, do, they, do they want to inherit this this much risk? But, you know, uh, we have we have a bull case for this scenario. You know, one reason is because Kushtar's balance sheet is absolutely pristine right now. They have, you know, about six to seven billion dollars in liquidity. Their leverage ratio is only one point one times. So, so the ability to pursue a deal is, is there. It's just that, you know, do they want to take uh, take on this much this much risk? So, you know, that com combine that with um, management's proven track record and Kushtar's ability to generate strong free cash flows, I think you have to give management the benefit of the doubt here. It's interesting, though, that the market isn't. And I'm wondering as well, when you say taking on this much risk, are you really just taking a look at the size of the deal? Because when you do take a look at the fundamentals and, and probably, you know, thinking the way the management of uh, Alameda Sion Kushtar is thinking, they've been wanting to move into the uh, Asia area. And even though Carrefour is uh, French, they do have a number of locations there. So that kind of gives them another foothold into, into Asia, does it not? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, j just last November, Kushtar had their investor day. And management reiterated that you know their primary focus when it comes to M&A is to expand their U.S. market and con continue to penetrate the Asia-Pacific market. So I think that's one of the reasons why the shares are down today, because you know, this deal you know, is going to ex significantly expand their presence in you know, Central and Western Europe. Um, historically, they, they, have, they had a larger pres presence in the Scandinavian um, territories, but not so much um, in, in, in Central and Western Europe. So. Uh, I think the M&A approach is changing, which is why investors are a little bit wary. Um, and at the same time, they're obviously inheriting uh, a food retail business, which is not their expertise. Um, I, I, I cover many packaged food companies and food retailers in, in the United States, and I, I've seen deals like this go wrong. You know, like where a company wanted to to, to buy, they, they bought another company, but they only really wanted a portion of their business. So then, after a few years, they try to sell the, the their their non-core business, and 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 that. And they struggle to do so, but you know those were smaller companies, and, and like I said, I think you have to give Kushtar the, the benefit of the doubt here because they have a proven track record of successful acquisitions.
Yeah, no, that's a very fair point in terms of companies making acquisitions that aren't their core competency, only to sell them off a few years later. Uh, it generates a lot of great fees for investment bankers, that's for sure, uh, but but perhaps not as much for the shareholders. Obviously, that's not what the Alain Mission Kushtar team is thinking these days. So let's talk potentially about the positives that we could see come to fruition from something like this. What do you think management's really thinking about when they want to move into this space further? Um, yeah, so I, I think one of the reasons why they're, they're pursuing this deal and, and why I think it could be successful is because Kushtar's business model is, is, um, is, a, little, is a little different. So they're, they have a highly decentralized uh, business model. They have you know, over 30 business units, and each business unit is, you know, um, they give their business unit leaders uh, a lot of power and, and ability to make the decisions on their own, which, you know, it, it's almost like a... They're a very large company, but they have a more of an entrepreneurial attitude because they're their decentralized business model, which is why I think they can, you know, tack on these large acquisitions, um, and 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 why they've had passed with uh, uh, successfully integrating these large acquisitions. If this deal does go through, I think we'll, you know, will there'll be a separate business unit, and um, certain certain uh, functions will be shared, which will generate synergies, you know, like such things like HR, accounting, those are the areas where I think you can typically generate synergies. But um, in terms of the, the sales side, the revenue side, I think the synergies may be a little bit more limited. One area that I, I could see that um, could help them is Kushtar has been trying to expand in the fresh food offering. And, uh, and, and now that they're, they're potentially acquiring a food retailer, that could help them ex expand their fresh offerings within their convenience stores. Aaron, we only have a minute left, but I want to ask you, what do you think, early days, what do you think Kushtar has to do to get the French government on side? Because the French government's already come out and said, yeah, we don't like it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, one, it's encouraging that, you know, we're getting a public response to this deal this fast. Um, but two, I, I was a little surprised um, of that comment by the French ministry because, you know, because Kushtar is acquiring a food retailer as well as a convenience store operator, I thought th there'd be a little bit less risk that this deal would not go through. Um, but you know now it's looking like, you know, it, 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 there's a possibility of a, of a fallout here. Um, but uh, I, you know, Kushtar, they don't have uh, a presence, a large presence at all in, in France right now. So, you know, th that's one of their bigger sticking points to, to why uh, this deal should, I guess, go through. All right, interesting stuff, Aaron. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us and break it down. Thank you. Aaron Sundaram is an equity analyst at CFRA Research.